Welcome to Heroes of Cosplay Sanctuary Podcast. This is your host, Scotty B. She's been featured in GQ, a Maxim model, and even been on the cover of her own comic book. But this does not even begin to explain the achievements and the level that my next guest has risen to. Relentless in her pursuits of bringing hope, joy, and charity through cosplay, she has given back to the community in every way possible. Fundraisers, charity events, hospital visits, giving back to her online community with her time and energy, and just being the best version of herself. She is selfless in every sense of the word. Challenging all of you to do something kind for someone else, please welcome the ever humble, ever grateful, Samantha Catalano, Samantha Cosplay. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. I know that there's a lot of crazy things going on. And even with all of the crazy, even with the coronavirus, you have turned that front upside down too. <laughs> you're it's, you're it's, out there doing, what a, doing time a lot to of be good, alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you're doing a lot of great things um, out in the community, online, everything that you can. Um, you've put together uh, princess reading sessions. If you I, wouldn't mind talking a little bit about it. Yes, so my plan is to do princess reading sessions for children who are stuck home. Um, I'm offering Elsa and Ariel right now. Um, the plan is to make a list for Elsa. Um, as many people, as many children want uh, special shout outs from Elsa that I will be just sending individual videos to them next week. And also the same for Ariel. Um, also, I'll have scheduled times up on Instagram when I will be reading them stories because I'm a teacher. So for me to not be able to teach, I need to give back in some way. <laughs> and I just feel like they're stuck home. So why not do something educational with something that they all really love? Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's just it's a very strange time. Um, but I really think that this is just it's just like such a great thing to to have. Uh, so probably by the time this airs, um, everything will be in full swing, yeah. but um, you'll probably have something else that's going on by then. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, just you have so much energy. And uh, again, just um, I'm very grateful to have you here. Um, I did mention that you have your own comic book. You are literally a superhero. Um, and I will, I'll, I'll bring that up in just a little bit. Um, but one of, one of my uh, favorite quotes from you, and this is kind of, this is almost like an origin. I'm, I'm going pretty far back. Um, but you said, you may not be able to change the world, but if you can change at least one person's world, then it makes a world of difference. And <clears throat> I think that was when you first put on Elsa from Frozen. And it was one of the first events that you were part of. And it was, um, it was a little North Pole for juvenile diabetes. Yep, that is true. That is true. And I... I truly, truly believe that, and I, I've, I have yet to prove myself wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw it yesterday. Um, I, I won't, I won't quote the religious text that it comes from, but I think it said. Um, I was watching something on Netflix. And it said, um, "If you can save just one, or save, save one and save them all," um, was kind of how how the just went. Um, but certainly you you do so many different things. Um, you went on from there and you appeared at the Ashley the Ashley Lauren Foundation uh, in the Incan Culture and Autism uh, Speaks charity event. And that was actually on ABC. That was on the news. Um, I think it was the mm -hmm. uh, Staten Island Advance picked it up. And uh, you've done uh, NDSS. You've been to the Ronald McDonald House. Yep. And just it just kind of keeps going and going. So um, it really, from day one, it was cosplay in the community. Was that always the intention when you got started with cosplay? I mean, did you did you get into it so that you could use yeah. it to get back home? Actually, it all actually started one Halloween. I was Elsa, and someone gave me the idea that I should do birthday parties and stuff. And I kind of like put it in the back of my head, but never really wanted to. And then the first event that I did was a charity event for um uh who was it for it was for um less fortunate kids on Staten Island that the district was putting together and they asked me if I would come for an hour as Elsa so that was the first event that I've ever done and then from there I was pretty much just doing charity events and then in the time being I was just 
getting more princesses to add. Then eventually that's when I opened up for birthday parties and stuff like that. But it, it started straight for charities at the beginning. Wow. <clears throat> and that's, I mean, um, I think it's a very different mindset than some people do have with cosplay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it can be used for different things. Um, I just spoke with uh, with another guest about using it for uh, cognitive and behavioral uh, therapy. I, you know, a lot of people are interested in competition. Uh, that's that's fairly normal. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and then there's there's a completely other, you know, the other side of it where you can use it to to give back and give back in so many ways. Would you be able to tell me about another one of your early programs, uh, which was actually called Samantha's Fairy Tale? Yes. So Samantha's Fairy Tale is the company I have that I do birthday parties, but I also have the Enchanted Wish program, which was strictly for kids, one-on-one -on -one visit with Princess of Choice, either in a hospital or a home setting, and I would visit them. I mean, I think it was during the week. So it wouldn't interfere, but it was usually during the week. And um, that I've done quite a few. And I've also partnered with Make-A-Wish to do visits for them as well for the kids that get the chance to finally go to Disney World. I'm the one that delivers the news. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so funny story. Once upon a time, I used to work with the wife's founder for Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh. Uh, yep. She was, she was the secretary of Minnesota for a company that I worked for. Um, so nice, just the nicest people. They are the uh, nicest people. <laughs> they really are. And very down to earth, as actually, you know, as absolutely you are too. Um, I think it's great. I do um, occasionally jump on your lives uh, when you do them. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm like in the middle of a bunch of things, and I'm like, oh. But um, so I'm sorry if I do miss them. But um, it's so great that that you get back and that you're so forward um, with who you are and what you stand for. Um, specifically, segueing into anti-bullying. Um, I feel super strong about that. I don't, um, I'm kind of Switzerland, as you may know. Um, this is a sanctuary. Uh, so I try not to get into yeah, calling people out for things, but um, I certainly am on the side of anti-bullying. I, I don't believe that there's anything to it. It's always unfounded and it's always just, uh, it puts you, in, it puts everybody in a bad spot. It, it um, really does. It really does. Um, but you've you've done uh, you've had some involvement with anti-bullying. Mm -hmm. um, I just wondered if if you might want to speak a little bit about uh, your thoughts on it and how you feel about what happens online and and otherwise with it. Cyberbullying, I feel like, is one of the most common forms of bullying that do take, that do go on, and um, especially being a teacher too. I really don't have much of a tolerance for it at all um years ago actually when i started cosplaying harley quinn i noticed that there was so many harley quinn cosplayers and there for some reason at that time period there was a ton of hate like a ton of hate towards body types that were cosplaying of like margot robbie's version of harley quinn and stuff like that and um i made quite a few videos at that time like please stop doing this. Like, not everyone is going to look like the actress. They're, this is them, you know, just portraying their version of it and everything else. And it actually caught the attention of Cosplay Against Bullying, who is their own Instagram account. And I actually partnered with them, um, I would say, two or three years ago at New York Comic Con, I had a booth with them. And we also promoted anti-bullying. Um, however, with suicide rates and everything else, it's very important that, like, if you see it, stop it. Like, I'm not everybody wants to get involved, and I totally understand that. But when it's someone that I know, even if it's someone that I don't know, I still feel like there's a need to stop it. Like, be, you know, be the voice of reason for this because it's, mm -hmm. it's not fair. And, like, you don't know what everybody else is battling either. So try to get in the middle of that and stop that if you can. Yep. I mean, it really. It's so, I mean, it's so easy to get wrapped up in on either side, but it's also really easy not to, um, you know, just rationalize. And I guess I, I don't, I don't mean to get too preachy on the show, but um, really uh, I've had an episode before where I talked about taking steps back and mm -hmm. think before you type 
really. Yes. I mean, think before you yes. say things. Um, I know some people um, have taken a stance on like really, um, really pushing hard on calling people out now um, because they do receive so much. And I think it's um, unfortunately, um, I don't, well, not unfortunately, I don't, but unfortunately, um, a lot of female cosplayers do receive a lot of just goofy, strange, and unwarranted comments, <laughs> which I just find, I, I don't know why people do that. Like, whenever I want to reach out to somebody, uh, DM them, there's usually a purpose behind it, not to just, like, waste someone's time. Yeah. Um, which, ultimately, that's that. what it is. Like, ultimately... <laughs> If you're like, hey, baby, or whatever it is, like, you're just wasting that person's time. Like, if you don't know them and you don't establish that no like and trust, you know, what's the point? What, what, uh, what are you doing? No. Um, moving on from that, you, you said, I know, I'm moving, am I moving kind of fast? No, I don't no, know. You're fine. <laughs> like, you're fine. <laughs> I just, I feel like it's, um, the energy is pretty good. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I just got home as, <laughs> I'm still going to work right now, so um, nobody's nobody shut anything down in Chicago. I was say, when is that uh, going to stop for you? I'm <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> um, well, I've um, I've heard it a couple of times, and I won't mention my employer or anything like that online, but um, they keep saying that they're part of essential um, or necessary components like healthcare or pharmaceuticals, things like that. Uh -huh. Um, so they're saying, well, we are, we, are, we are absolutely necessary to X, Y, and Z, so we're not shutting down. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how far that goes. You know, I guess when the army shows up, then yeah, they can. Yeah, got you down. Uh, but, um, I'm fine. It's really quiet, which is nice. Um, but to move on to um, another topic, not, uh, not bullying, but actually um, anxiety. And you've said more than once that you struggle with anxiety and that um, cosplaying as Elsa and identifying with her character has helped you let it go. Yeah. Um, to be a little bit cliche about how I'm saying that, um, would you like to tell me about the character and how you feel empowered with her and what you would say to someone who deals with anxiety? Yeah, so before I started cosplaying Elsa, I was very very shy I still to this day I get I have a little bit like before I ever before I perform every single time before I walk in the house I have to take a deep breath and be like okay it's, it's gonna be fine I still have these pep talks but as cosplaying Elsa and getting to meet all these children I really opened up so much more and I did that about two years before I started going to conventions so it actually really helped me open up to have conversations with people and everything else but it all started really with the kids. Like, the kids are really what got me out of my shell. Plus, you know, when you do parties for children, they don't, they're not just sitting there staring at you. They're asking you a whole bunch of questions. So mm -hmm. you better be ready. <laughs> and it was a lot of preparation and a lot of um, pushing myself every time to go out and do these things. And, you know, big events. There were some events that were like 300 people. And when I first started um, doing this, I didn't sing. I was very nervous. And then I eventually started to push myself to sing in front of crowds, which really helped my anxiety a lot. But the good thing was, and this is what I say with cosplay and anxiety, you get to step out of your own shoes to be someone else. And that mindset really does help a lot because they're not looking at you. They're looking at their favorite character. So mm -hmm. you kind of have an out. It's a little bit of a mental trick, but it does work. Um, as far as people with anxiety that want to cosplay, my advice is always to go for it. Because you do get that little break from you. You get to be somebody else for a little while. And I just, I, I, I think it's like, it's not easy because you do have to socialize and stuff like that. But definitely, definitely give it a shot. <laughs> just give it a shot. Yes, I, I think it's, it's a lot of fun when you get into it. Oh, yeah. Um, I only have a couple of cosplays because I spend a lot of time on the show, but I do have a list and um, spoilers for anybody who's listening, there will be a bucket list episode <laughs> coming out uh, where I go through, like, I just go through a litany of all these cosplays that I have lined up. So it's, I just, it is, it's a lot of fun, right? And that's the whole point. Fun, it's, fun. it's a hobby, it's fun, and there's so much you can do for yourself, for others with it. Super yeah, cool. and conventions opened up a lot of, like, social interaction for me as well. 
a whole, like a whole new group of friends, people who really um, understand you as well and, and are into the same things that you're into. And you don't have to feel so bad about being such a big nerd. And I love that. <laughs> Um, I didn't originally include this question, but um, when you talk about getting to be part of a community and that it is more of a social engagement, um, you are, we'll call you the leader of the New York Avengers, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you are the yeah. captain. Uh, the captain, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that all started at a charity event. Um, a lot, it was a lot of us that were friends already, and then some that I kind of um, reached out to certain people to fill certain spots. And then by the end of that event that we did, I, you know, I sat down and I said, you know what, guys, why don't we just do this? And we do have most of the original members that were in it. You know, some, everyone, some, some of our other members have taken different paths, but mostly it's the same people that we started with. So, um, yeah definitely a lot of fun also quick i'm gonna add this in as well just like i'm doing the princess um readings the new york avengers page will have um a new character every day of next week we will be interacting with the children as well and possibly book reading or just shouting out and speaking to the kids just to give them some kind of interaction throughout the day oh that's very cool so if you are listening ladies and gentlemen Go and check that out. Go to at New York event or go to at and why Avengers and see what they've been up to because it's um, I mean, the feed itself is just really cool. Anyways, um, you guys do so much. Um, I've I've mentioned several events that, have, that are um, stamped with the New York Avengers approval, including Love for Lovey, um, among other things. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm a big fan of what you guys put together and just you know with the understanding of how much goes into coordinating anything with cosplay let alone a cosplay <laughs> event let alone a cosplay event that other people are now interacting with you and um you know it's there's so many moving pieces so much going on and you know it, it's just amazing um they're an amazing awesome. they really yeah. are i'm very very proud of every one of them <laughs> And I'm actually surprised to hear that um, you you haven't always been singing. You said that when you so, started at Elsa. Um, when I was little, I would sing everywhere and anywhere. And then as I got older, I got more introverted. And I was like, I will not do this. Um, but yeah, now, finally, I, I sing at parties. Which, to me, honestly, I feel like singing in front of a group of people that I don't know <laughs> is easier than easier. singing in front of a group of people that I do know. So that's my trick. <laughs> Uh, and um, before, so you you'd um, you've been in performance. Let's you know we'll we'll say that you've you've been a performer and you have also been uh, a Maxim model. Yeah. Um, prior prior to um, prior to your your debut in cosplay, um, my question is: um, Did cosplay help you learn more about modeling, or did modeling help you learn or help you build more with cosplay? Um, I definitely think it's the other way around. I think modeling definitely helped me um, with cosplaying because with modeling too, I would do a lot of networking. So I did have the experience when it did come to talking to people and stuff like that, but also posing and photo shoots and the professionalism of photo shoots also has taught me a lot in going into the cosplay world because we do a lot of photo shoots. And um, I would definitely say that modeling pretty much shaped me to be a better cosplayer. Um, cosplay, I would say, when it comes to like photo shoots and stuff, definitely helped me bring back a lot of my modeling skills. So maybe a little bit of both, but I would say more the other way around. All right. Um, and just to, to make sure that my context is correct, I guess um, saying, you know, does cosplay help you with modeling in terms of like giving you content and you know, having having something to um, make relatable for people because the Instagram world that we live in, um, you kind of have to have a little bit of modeling under your belt, yeah. um, but not totally necessary. I mean, I'm obviously not a model, um, but I, I just think it's it's really great uh, to be able to put yourself out, out there like that and um, to get into that. Um, it's just it's just very interesting. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Bridget Patton. 
Bridget Patton was a Maxim model. And yeah. I, I found out that she was actually um, an analyst. She's, uh, she's in South Korea now. Really? Um, super, super nice. She's, she's just so nice. Um, but um, I found her through uh, another friend of mine from a little while ago. I helped her build a website and we did a blog. And from the blog, found her blog called Aloha Bridget, which is, I mean, she, she covers so many different things. Um, a lot of like um, the, the perception of uh, females in general in South Korea, yeah. but also for herself. Um, but you also have a blog. That started very recently. This it's just it crazy timing because it actually started about I actually launched it about a week ago. I was due to launch it um, over the summer, but I really pushed and locked down and was like, I'm doing this. Um, so yeah, I started Sam in the City. Um, the name draws inspiration to my favorite show in the world, which is Sex in the City. Um, so it's always kind of been a dream of mine to write and be able to release my thoughts you you know that I do live streams every week pretty much and I just really like to hear myself talk I guess so <laughs> I'm putting it into words um the blog is pretty much a little bit of everything it's not just a cosplay blog I do like to speak about my photo shoots and makeup tests and everything else but it's also focused on my anxiety places I like to eat <laughs> just in general of everything that I love about New York and everything that's here and just uh, being a cosplayer and teacher and everything else from New York. And it um, it's very well, well written, everyone. So you should definitely go and check it out. I haven't left any comments because I always get hung up on logging in and like putting all, I think it, like you have to like the WordPress things. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten around to that. It's almost like leaving um, a review on iTunes where you have to like validate that you're oh, yeah. a human being, that you live on earth. Um, <laughs> your social security number has to go in there like six times. And yeah, by the time you get to the review, you're like, what was I even looking for? <laughs> Uh, so it can be a little bit frustrating, but check it out, everyone. It's really cool, and it is not the first time that you've been in print. I do have something here um, for for visual reference, if if it shows up, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll move my good. mic a little bit. So we got there. We go, yay! And I was very excited to find this. Um, and what I can tell uh, everyone about it um, before I turn it over to Sam, um, it was uh, from the creator of UC Comics. It's Connor Murphy. It was co-written by you, and it came out in October 2018. So my, um, my questions and just what I would like to know about the most would be how did you come up with the concept and what was your inspiration for, for creating Sam Volume 1, The Relic. Okay, so me and Connor spoke about this a lot and we were like, we should totally collaborate on a comic. It was always my dream to come up with a comic book character or be based on a comic book character. And he was like, well, what can we do? Connor actually had an old um, script laying around from a project that he has never, like, never picked up again. And it was maybe like a couple pages. And it was... Pretty much the scene in, I don't want to give too much away, but the scene in the comic of when the little boy gets by the train. Mm -hmm. So it was like all of that. So from that page, we were like piggybacking off of each other. Like, okay, what if we did this? What if we did that? Sam actually had a super suit that was ridiculous. And we were just like, this is not working. This does not work for the character. I also, as you know, I'm a huge Jessica Jones fan as well. And oh, yes. I say Sam's attitude is based a little bit off of JJ's attitude as well. Um, so we just went back and forth. And it, it's just, there's a lot of references in there because I read a lot of books. I watch a lot of TV. Um, there's a concept, too, about balance where a lot of people mm -hmm. asked me if it had to do, like, with the Avengers or anything. And it really didn't. It actually kind of had to do with an episode that I've seen of um, The Twilight Zone. So I've ta <laughs> we've taken inspiration from so many different things. But um, the concept of Sam was that we wanted like an angsty, more of a teenager than my actual age, um, struggling with her power and not really knowing what to do. And she's kind of annoyed about it. <laughs> and 
she ends up becoming more of like an anti-hero and at first it's a little bit against her will but she ends up kind of saving the world <laughs> oh, in the in the words of comics explained it is amazing <laughs> oh it's um it really is it's really cool um uh, it goes really fast, so anybody who wants to pick it up, um, while there are copies available, um, you can find them. I think I was on Etsy, or was I on? Etsy. I might. Yeah, I think I was on Etsy when I found it. Um, but it really is like the the artwork is just really. Oh, um, it's very dynamic too. Like it's not just frame, frame, frame. Like it's it's different. It's um, it's fun. Um, it it kind of it really helps you visualize what's going on. Um, like the part where you throw the pizza and the part where you're on the moon. Um, <laughs> so just a, a few different, a few different things. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's some good action, and you just totally mess a few um, bad guys. We'll call them demons. We just mess them up, and um, it looks like there might be more coming. Yes. At the end, it's, it's um, kind of a little like bit of a cliffhanger. We are talking about a second one, and the second one will definitely be. Um, a continuation of the first but a little different <laughs> we're going a little different we're going to go probably go a little back and forth between origin and now and origin and now to give you more of a backstory of why she is the way she is awesome just um super cool and thank you so much for for sending it for signing it um, um it's just um it's when i find something that i can frame it you can see I've got a few. Yeah. Um, because it is oversized, it's a little bit trickier to, to find. Right now, I just have like, um, I do have a case for it, but it doesn't, I can't put it on the wall, obviously, yeah. but I'll figure it out. So you mentioned Jessica Jones before, and I will mention it again. I just, I have very few notes here for it. Um, so Kristen Ritter, um, she looks a little bit like you, but um, the, um, even more interesting, um, if you ever listen to a podcast um, called David Tennant does a podcast with, she's one of his first guests. It, and, really? Dude, yeah, I didn't know that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's fun. He, he talks to a lot of different people. He's Catherine Tate on there and a few different um, people that he's been on shows with, um, Kristen being one of them. And they have a really good conversation. She talks about how she was a model when she was like 15 and she got found in a mall. Um, so I thought that was interesting. It's like, well, you did, yeah, you kind of started off there a little <laughs> bit. Um, you actually most recently just posted a Jessica Jones I on did. your Instagram feed. Um, so yeah, tell me, tell me about, um, we don't have to go through all three seasons and spoil everything for everybody, um, for the, for the 10 people who haven't watched <laughs> Jessica Jones and who don't appreciate the character yet. Um, yeah. Uh, what can, what would you like to tell me about Jessica Jones? I am like the biggest Jessica Jones fan ever. Um, I, I don't, I don't even know how my favorite episode, I think the earlier episodes of her with Kilgrave are probably my favorites amongst all of them because I feel like Kilgrave is such a powerful villain because he's like almost undefeatable and it's he he's frightening to me he's he's a scary villain and the way she handles things too at the beginning and at first she's very very like reluctant with anything she's drunk all the time and I feel like through the season two you also start to see a change a little bit she gets more of a heart Plus, once season one is put to the side, there's new issues. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but it's just, it's an awesome show. And, like, she's just a very relatable character, especially if you do suffer from anxiety or any type of depression. She's definitely the superhero that a lot of people would try to. She's, it's not your average, like, colorful Marvel type of um, superhero. So this is a very different gritty take. And especially that she's a female and she's like this, it's very different. So highly recommend it to anyone that wants to watch it. Yes, she really, I mean, I think she she's trying, like she's, she starts off so fractured mm -hmm. in the show. I just feel like she's just kind of like, I have to do this because it's right but you know like not she she has a, absolute lines that she draws in the sand yeah. for right and wrong and um it doesn't seem to matter if you know if you if you flip sides 
no matter who you are. And, you know, that comes up later in season three. Um, you know, when you take it into your own hands, like she did, mm -hmm. um, that you have to be very careful with all of that. I guess that's the, that's the Spider-Man, yeah. uh, the Spider-Man quote. Everyone knows it with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. Um, but I don't know. It's, it seems like she always teeters between wanting that responsibility and then being kind of thrust into it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I guess that that part is relatable for me. Sometimes it's just like, uh, I don't, I don't really do. I don't want an adult today. Um, that's pretty much the struggle that anybody goes through. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that's um, you know one one cosplay of many that you have created. And um, a real quick question, um, just before before I get into just the litany of different cosplays that you put together, um, Jessica Jones was primarily um, an original work. You you put that together, did all the weathering, um, found yeah. everything. Now, the funny thing with Jessica Jones was I uploaded a picture of myself as Captain Marvel on Reddit, and I had about like a whole th like I would say maybe a total of 50 comments that people were like you look like Jessica Jones and I was like what first of all I'm blonde I don't see it but then I I, I like really studied the picture I made it bigger I posted another picture and then I also got the same response and I'm like I don't see it I still to this day really don't see it until I actually do the makeup and then one day I just took one of my old leather jackets, put some stuff together, and I was like, let me just makeup test this. And I looked in the mirror, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so strange. <laughs> this is bizarre. So then that's when I really started to cosplay Jess and, like, really got into it and, like, just kind of studied it a little bit better and started to look a little better and better. And now I'm pretty much down for science with how I do the desk of makeup. Oh, yeah, and uh, not just the makeup, but the characterization, too. Um, some of those shots that you have posted, they're almost frame by frame, like exactly what you would envision that you would do or things that she did do on the show. Yeah. Um, so that that's just super cool. Um, but and you've you've created so many. There's just there's so many I probably will not cover. I won't get them all. But um, Cable, Jessica Rabbit, Captain Marvel, Harley Quinn, Marilyn Monroe, Spider Gwen. <laughs> Um, and just about every Disney princess. I know it's it's a it's a pretty long list, so I don't have them all um, yeah. in my head. And and Wonder Woman, which um, I um, I don't know. Do you still have all? Like, do you keep everything, or um, do I you have kind of, most like, of that. Yeah, I, it's really funny too because I'll actually be posting a new Wonder Woman uh, photo tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So Fine. that'll that'll probably be out by the time um, by the time we get here. So yeah, that that's fun. I mean, it's just. Uh, you you have such a, a depth and breadth of what you present, how you present yourself, everything that, that you're doing. Um, I guess I guess this is kind of like some anthropology appreciation podcast. <laughs> so, like, um, but uh, you know, just uh, thank you so much for for sharing your time, for being on the show, um, for remaining so positive and still um, so available for people, um, even in this time where everybody's kind of shutting down and um, it's just a crazy, sort of very anxious, uncertain time. Yeah. And you're still like a total rock. <laughs> it's, I, I, have, so much. I feel like I have to be too, because it, it like, as, as introverted as I am, I still need to get that bit of extrovert out too for my own well-being. Um, but also, too, I'm, I, my heart's really breaking for these kids that are not in school right now and they have nothing to do all day. I'm sure they have their homework and their virtual learning. But on top of that, they're also very confused. You know, kids want to go outside. It's starting to get nice here in New York. And they're, they're, they're stuck. And, I, and it, it pains me, like, as a person, as a teacher, as everything else, like, that we can't do anything for them. There's, there's just not much we could do. Yes, I mean, yeah, it's just it's a it's just a weird place for kids to be. Um, I don't, um, I guess I I don't see. I mean, I saw them out just yesterday, so like I, they were like it was pretty normal. Still. Good, that's, that's good. Um, so and and I yeah, I was encouraged by that. Like kids are still out doing so. normal really... activities, but yeah, I don't see the buses anymore. It's um, 
yeah, so I, I think just little by little, I think it's going to kind of go away. So it's really great that uh, you're you're doing what you're doing and offering what what you have for as many as you can. Um, if I, you know, uh, I guess the only the only character that I could probably do and pull off would be Shrek. Um, so if you need a, if you need a Shrek, um, yeah. I I don't have the green makeup, um, but I was in the musical, green so. Gold. Yeah, yeah, and I, um, I didn't get cast as Shrek. Um, the guy who did was he's a ama- he's an amazing singer. He's an operatic tenor, um, but I did read for him. He was in Europe for a week, so I got to read the whole script. And everybody's like, "What?" Yeah, like, like, I, I, I don't care. You know, and I could, I could do, I could do this all day. All right, and you know, so I, I read through the whole script in the voice, and it was a really. It was just a lot of fun. If I still had the script, I would just be like, "Okay, yeah, let's let's put something together." Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's great. I have three questions for you. They're a little bit random. One's oh. always the same, and I ask them at the end of the show, and it's always sad that I ask them because it means the show's coming to an end. And um, so here you go. First question. Um, what do you want the plot to the next Harley Quinn movie to be? The next plot. Um, I really like that this one was more about her independence, but I I don't know. I want I want her to be more of a hero. I want her to come out a little bit more. I mean, I know that I still want her to remain Harley, which means a little bit, you know, the way she is. But I don't know. I want her to do something really good, like and like it. <laughs> because she's very back and forth. She's in the anti-hero bracket, but she's not fully there yet. So I do want her to do a little bit more hero stuff. I think that would definitely be a different side of Harley that we would like to see. She could she could do a total turn. I think she she almost did in the animated series. She had kind of a moment of I have to do something right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, that's where the character or- originated and I think she does. She just she offers so much to the DC universe. It's it's a lot of fun. So I, I do hope they make it into a trilogy. I hope they have another movie. I agree. I really I really like her the way she is as herself. So I do like that very like angsty troublemaker type of thing. But I I want to see her do more. Like just go a little bit more on the hero side. Just a mm-hmm. little bit. Just a little bit. Um, next question for you. Describe Dom Charland in one word. <laughs> in one word. Uh, incredible. He really is an incredible human being. He really, he truly is from the amount of charity work that he does, it just the way he speaks to the way, he, I mean, I can also say that he's a pain in the butt too, but we'll keep it, <laughs> we'll, keep it <laughs> we'll keep it at incredible. He's just one of a kind, really, truly. A great human being. I hope he doesn't mind me saying so. He's a really good sport. And yes, he is astonishing. He um, is. And a good cosplayer. Even oh, he... he's so good. <laughs> he oh. does a lot of work on, on his costumes. I I look up to uh, people who, who can, you know, like I look at that and I'm like, someday, someday I will be able to do this. Um, I will figure this out and I will have he, cool costumes like he, Dom Charlotte. He did, um, when he did Aquaman recently, he he did all of those individual scales on that armor piece. Oh my <laughs> goodness, I can't tell you the screaming and carrying on that went on and he just kept going and going and going and he was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to do it. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to do it. And it came so good. He really... It, Yes, it, it just, it's really shimmery. Um, you guys look great. Thank you, in, thank you. In the picture, it's just very cool. And any time that you do a duo with Dom, I think the first one that I remember you doing with him was Lady Canary. Or, yeah. Or, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was Canary and, and Green Arrow. And yeah. he borrowed, I think he borrowed it. He borrowed that from Pat, yeah. yep. <laughs> um, so my last question for you is what do you want your impact on the world to be? I, my, my impact. I really just hope that I could, I could spread more kindness through the community, for the kids, and just, just kindness. 
that's my biggest thing. That's what I preach to everybody all the time. I mean, everyone is entitled to their opinion, but if I could just leave a little bit of love and kindness and take that with me, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> um, well, bless you. <laughs> um, it's, it's so good. Um, where can we find you and how can we support your current causes? And we, uh, we at the show, um, you pick one and we will support that cause. Okay, so you can find me on Instagram at Samantha's Cosplay, Samantha's underscore cosplay. Um, also Facebook, same. I think it's under um, Samantha Cosplay Model is to find it on Facebook. Um, my biggest cause, the one like the one foundation that I work with the closest is Ronald McDonald House. They mm-hmm. are incredible, and they are such good friends of ours, and that's my number one cause that I support no matter what, is the housing for all the kids that are going for treatments. All right. Well, I will make a note of that. Um, we will put all of this in the show notes for everyone so that they can find you and they can also support the same things that you support. Um, we'll make sure that we have a link for the show and eventually the website um, when I can get around to it, um, that we will we will make sure that the Ronald McDonald House is acknowledged. Awesome. And... Uh, we will we will donate. I'm not sure how much. Um, maybe awesome. maybe you know when the government gives uh, everybody all that free money, <laughs> just give it right back. Um, but yeah, uh, it's so so great to have you on the show. So Thanks. great everything that you do. And I guess that that brings us to to the very end of the show. So this is Scotty B. We're talking with Samantha Cosplay, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.